Hey guys, Chris again, ClassicVWBugs.com and what you see before you is a 1974 Super Beetle sedan. We found this car out of Massachusetts for a client that lives in Connecticut and this was part of our Find a Bug program. Guys, Find a Bug is where I find you a car. I look across the country for these cars and uh, I got leads across the country. I got fellas that can help me out and source cars for us and even go out and inspect the cars for us if need be. And uh, so this is someone that's a little more budget conscious, that does not want a full restoration, or someone that does not want to wait the two years to get their car back. You know, restoration costs these days are getting very expensive, approaching the $100,000 mark when it comes to restoring a Beetle. I know it sounds insane, uh, but it's uh, the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Um, I'm trying to get keep costs down, but you know, between the, the cost of my painters, the part supplies, have uh, parts have gone up in price especially since covid uh since the inflation and all and uh it's gotten pretty nutty so someone who's in the ten thousand dollar range twenty thousand dollar range thirty thousand dollar range and higher you want a high-end driver or you want a show car the find a bug program is probably your best bet and uh you tell me what criteria you want what palette is on your plate when it comes to getting a vw and i can find it for you so i'll have a link in the description below this video where you can uh find uh, more information about my find a bug program and I'd be more than happy to help you out. So here we have the 74 Super Beetle. This was this is for a client that's out of Connecticut. And he wanted a Super Beetle because uh, this was in his family, I guess, growing up when he was younger. And he just wanted to relive his youth, of course. Found this car for a great price uh, in Massachusetts for under $10,000. Uh, and then we bring the car here to my shop and do a full-on inspection. And then whatever upgrade you want, we can do in shop. So he, since he lived in Connecticut, he went up to Massachusetts to see the car for me um, and for him himself. Uh, but what was great was we went on a Zoom call. And so he was going around the car with his phone while I was monitoring it and asking the certain questions and uh, things that he wouldn't know to ask or where to look, uh, the crucial areas on the car. So uh, that's the really great thing with technology today, guys. We can go on a Zoom conversation and I can help you out with that when it comes to finding a car. So once we got the car in shop, the car looked very original to me, guys. I mean, even when it was on the Zoom call, it looked so good. Uh, it's definitely on the inside is a definite original piece. I don't think this car has really been tampered with or has had any sort of major restoration. It probably has had an outside respray at one point, and there was only two dead giveaways that gave away the, uh, the, uh, the respray. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, if you look anywhere else, the car looks like it has a good shine to it too, but it looks like it's, you know, 50-something years old maybe and, and, and was very well taken care of. I've seen cars that are very well taken care of and the paint still looks good. The only thing that gave it away was when I came down here and then finally when I went on the lift and you see that rubber buffer between the fender and the running board, you see it's painted blue. Uh, that should be black, a black piece of rubber. You know, these cars are painted without all these with the running boards on and such. So uh, that kind of gave it away that maybe the car was resprayed at one point. Very tough to tell. There was no respray or overspray on the seals. You know, the chrome trim is the original trim. The scrapers look to be the original scrapers. There's no respray on those or overspray. You know, if a car's been resprayed on the outside, you tend to see overspray in the chrome trim area or on the rubber seals here. And we do not see that on this car. So I was pretty convinced. And, e and even more convincing was you know, re no respray on the fender beads. And these fender beads look to be the original fender beads. You know, they got some uh, age to them, but there's no caking of paint in between the fender and the uh, and the body. And then the other giveaway was down here by the, uh, the hood handle seal. You see that there, it's got some blue paint on it. I did not want to take that off, risking, you know, pulling paint off and, and whatnot. So, we kind of opted to, to leave it that way. Same with the window seals and the chrome. The owner opted to leave it the way it is, just so we did not jeopardize uh, sacrificing any chipped paint or anything like that. So, uh, But the car came into my shop, and he had a list of things that he wanted to do. Uh, so I'm going to go over that with you right now. He did offer disc brakes front and rear. Now, ordinarily, you can get away with just front disc brakes on a Beetle. Most of the braking, I think at least 80% of it, is done from the front the rear you can still get away with just using the drums if you have a high performance engine in there in the car i don't know a porsche engine 
1776 or higher and you want to go with disc brakes in the rear it's not going to hurt um, I think the disc brakes are very reliable and it definitely uh, a little more safety conscious when it comes to not dealing with wheel cylinders um, that we've been having issues with as of late you know some of these aftermarket wheel cylinders that are on the market they are say quote unquote OEM or they say they're German and uh, I see a lot of them failing in a very short matter of time uh, so if you did want to go for rear disc brakes um, front are pretty much bolt on the rear was a little problematic uh, you know they give you a, you know a, a brake line kit an e-brake kit and some of that stuff had to be finagled with and to, to get to fit right the e-brake uh, cables were actually way too long so we had to uh, fabricate uh, a remedy for that and I called CIP1.com about it and he knows about this it. it's a it's a problem they have with the kit so it wasn't us uh, so we put that on we also took his bumpers off detailed those we also got behind the bumpers resprayed those scratched it down resprayed those and rust proofed it so since these are the original bumpers cleaned up the bumper brackets cleaned up his chrome trim he put LED headlights in the front he opted for those these are very good LED headlights we also put the car up on the lift and give it its full inspection uh, valve adjustment oil change tune-up he opted for an electronic ignition we put that into the original distributor he also wanted a new undercoat on the chassis so we scratched down the pan got it nice and clean got rid of some of the surface rust that was on there and gave it a nice coat of truck bed liner he got some new tailpipes in the back we also cleaned up his engine compartment a bit without going overboard of course um, got some new hoses new rubber boots clamps anywhere that needed German braided hose we put that in and so got this baby we even had to take the carb off and had to do a mild rebuild on the carburetor uh, so you know a lot of these cars in an original condition like you see these cars they're sitting for years and they're not going through their paces uh, thoroughly you know and I always tell people drive your cars or run them at least once a week twice a week get things flowing because when the cars are sitting for a long time they, they, you know the gas gets stale and you don't want to be forced in the springtime to you know have to siphon out gas and get some new fresh gas in there so but uh yeah valve adjustment tune up did everything he needs to be turnkey and ready to go with this car and that's part of our find a bug program guys if you're interested again link in the description below the video where you can see about find a bug and uh very cool car uh he also opted for some electrical upgrades on the inside so let's open the inside here nice door panels the original seats horse hair in the seats is showing some age you sit on that seat you could hear some crunching because the horse hair is kind of getting dried out but everything looks really nice with these seats it does not look like they've been ever tampered with and they seem to be very original to me same with the door panels carpet is also original his dash amazingly enough i mean these dashes are known to be cracking after you know a time like this of all this time that's gone by and if you look he only has one slight little crack on the top of that dash that one crack right there so uh, the fellow that i know that repairs those there's guys out there that will repair padded dashes uh, try to find him this week and sure enough after 40 years of doing business he is retiring so good for him um but uh i could have used him uh for this this repair but he used to repair our dashes like this and man you could not tell that the dash ever had a crack so very cool there headliners in excellent shape as well so again if you have a headliner that we get a car for you and it needs re replacing i could replace that for you and do it to its stock condition in these years they always had the one piece headliners with the vents in the back so there was no tuck around the back window Original carpet in the back as well, original insulation, original seat upholstery on the back seats. And then he also opted for a console on the floor. And with that console, he wanted installed. There we go. There's those cigarette lighters. And so what he's going to do is he's going to hook up heated uh, pads to put on his seats so he has heated seats. Now, not recommended to run these through the stock fuse box because probably going to blow some things it's going to be too much current so we did have to go back and go directly through to the battery with some relays um, so when you turn the car off uh, those pads will will turn off as well 
we don't want them on all the time when the car is turned off. And then he also opted for another cigarette lighter in the dash here. This had a cap on it, the original cap to cover this, a cover. So we put a VW a stock uh, cigarette lighter here. He's going to put a Bluetooth unit in here so he can use his phone and then just tune his radio to the station that the Bluetooth unit tells you to tune to so then he can use his phone and hear music actually through his radio and the stock speaker. Uh, and then the unit itself that pokes into that cigarette lighter has a microphone on it so if he wants to use his phone he can talk to that unit. Uh, and since it's, we had to be close to the steering wheel, of course, because he's driving, uh, so he opted for that. And um, a couple of things that we added to this Find a Bug project for him to get it ready for almost daily driver use or leisure driving and be trouble free. So uh, that's just some of the things we did on the car, guys. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any comments or questions about Find a Bug or about this car or you want to add anything that I've left out, possibly. Um, Please leave it in the comment section below. And that's it, guys. I mean, this is what we do here. And you want a, a car that you can get in and go and not worry too much about where you're going with it because it's not a show car or things like that. I mean, I can find it for you. So perfect little find a bug example. And uh, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Uh -huh.